Hey, welcome. This is Lee Waller, and I am working with Unreal Engine's motion design tools. And in this tutorial, I'm looking at modifiers. Now, modifiers can be added to 2D shapes and 3D shapes, and they give you more functionality with those shapes. I've changed up my layout a little bit for this tutorial so that I can see the operator stack as well as the details for any of the objects that I'm looking at. You can see in the motion design outliner, I have a rectangle there. Here are the details for that rectangle. And over here to the right side, you'll see the operator stack where the modifiers are listed. The first modifier I'm going to look at is the bend modifier. To use that, I'm going to add in a cube. The bend modifier can be used on 2D shapes and 3D shapes. I'm going to make some adjustments to this cube. First, I'm going to Rotate it just a little bit so that we can see it. And then I'm going to come down here and on the shape properties, I'm going to set that to free and I'm just going to increase the height of it just a little bit. And now to add this modifier, I'll come over to the operator stack, modifiers, hit the plus button and go to bend. You can see immediately that it is bending that shape. In the modifier stack, it has added in this subdivide as well as the bend modifier. This subdivide will need to be used on a few of these modifiers so that we get enough subdivision in the shape for it to work. Right now it has two cuts and you can see those two cuts, one about here and one about here. And I'm gonna go ahead and crank this up to the maximum. It's only 15 cuts, but it does help the resolution rounding that curve right there. To take a look at the bend modifier, I'm gonna first jump down to the angle and you can see the angle amount right now is 25. I'm gonna go ahead and increase that up to 90. You'll see now how that is bending the shape. And let me bring this back a little bit. So we can increase that angle on up to 360 degrees. I'm going to keep it for right now at 90. You have the ability to change where the bend is occurring. And then also the rotation. The extent here has to do with the curve and how tight this curve might be. I'm going to decrease that and you'll see that it becomes a much tighter curve. And symmetric extents affects how this bend occurs. Right now it is occurring symmetrically along the entire length of the shape. If we deselect that, then we have the curve only at this point and up. I'll apply that back and we can also see how bi-directional affects the shape. For any of the modifiers that you add into the operator stack, if you want to disable them, you have the ability to deselect this checkbox and it disables that modifier. And if you want to delete a modifier, simply click the trash can. I'm going to go ahead and delete that out and we'll move on to the next modifier. I'm going to bring the rectangle back and I will delete that modifier and we'll take a look at the extrude modifier. Now this works on 2D shapes but not 3D shapes. I'll rotate the shape and you'll see now that the extrude modifier has extruded this flat 2D shape into a 3D shape. The extrusion depth is right there. We can increase that or decrease that. This also has the option to close the back of the extrusion if you do not want that closed. And let me swing around there to the back of it. You can deselect that option. And then also it has the option. Right now, the extrusion is going to the opposite direction of the face. The face is right here and it's extruding in the opposite direction. If we want to change that, you can send it to the front so that it extrudes from the front out from the front. And then also you can do it symmetrically so that the front is in the middle and it extrudes symmetrically to the back and to the front. I'm going to reset those properties. And while we have this extrude applied to this rectangle, I'm going to add one more modifier to it. And that is the bevel modifier. The bevel modifier will bevel the edges of any 3D shape. I'm going to bring this a bit closer so we can see this better. 
and I'll increase the inset on that. And you can see that bevel right there. And then the iterations is the number of creases or lines that we get in this bevel. Right now, it is a very straight angle. And by increasing the iterations, it rounds it out. I'm gonna go ahead and delete those and reset. The next modifier I want to work with is the Boolean modifier. And this will actually work with 2D shapes and 3D shapes. For this to work, you're always going to need two different shapes. I'm gonna use 3D shapes for this example. I'm gonna use the cube and the sphere. I'm gonna increase the size of both of these just so we can see it a little bit better. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of adjust these and put them in place. Let me bring this forward just a little bit. You'll need to add the Boolean modifier to both objects. And then this example, I want to use the sphere to cut a shape into the cube. So the cube is going to need to be the target. And the sphere, we're gonna to need to change it to subtract. You'll see that it changes color. Its visibility has been turned off in the render, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off in the engine right there. And now you can see that the sphere is cutting its shape into the cube. I can change the mode from subtract to intersect, and only the point at where those two are meeting is going to show up. And then we also, we can bring those together as one piece. If you're using multiple instances of the Boolean on separate shapes, you can set which channel they go to. So for this one, it would be zero. If I wanted to add in other shapes and create other shapes with the Boolean modifier, I could set those to one and continue using the Boolean modifier. For the next modifier, I'm gonna add a star in, and that modifier is the mirror modifier. As indicated with the name, this is going to mirror the object that you've applied it to. You can rotate it by moving back through the object. You can begin to cut into the object. If you want to remove that, deselect the plane cut, or with that still applied, you can flip the cut side. The next modifier I'm going to use is the outline. It's simple enough. You can apply it to the 2D shapes to create an outline of that shape. You'll see for mode that you have outset or inset. This changes the direction of which the outline is placed based on the original object. The distance will increase the size of the stroke based on whether you're on the inset or on the outset. If you choose to keep the inside, you can deselect the remove inside option. The next modifier is the pattern modifier. Right now, this cube has been duplicated four times and it is laid out on the Y axis. I'm gonna add some space in between them. And so you can change the axis from Y to X and I'll rotate this just slightly. And also Z. I'm gonna reset that. Back on my Y axis, we'll take a look at rotation. So you can rotate these on any axis. And then you can also scale them. The accumulate transform option affects the way that rotation and scale are applied. When you rotate the pattern now, the objects do not rotate as single pieces, but as one whole piece. Same with scale. Under layout, we also have the option to create a grid. So this grid is being created on the Y and Z plane. You can change that to the X and Y plane. And let me rotate that. Or on the Z and X plane. I'll reset this back and go to the original YZ plane. And we can add how many pieces we want to repeat and adjust the amount of spacing. 
we have the same options on rotation and scale. Under layout, there's one more option and that is circle. I'll increase the radius up to 180 and I'll add in some more instances and you can work with the full angle. And the start angle. The plane cut modifier is a fairly simple modifier. It uses a plane to cut into the shape you've applied it to. The plane origin adjusts the position of the plane as it cuts through the shape. You can also use it as a transition to wipe the shape on or off. The plane rotation allows you to rotate the angle of which the plane cuts into the shape. You can also invert the cut and by deselecting fill holes, you can open up a hole in the shape that you're cutting into. The next modifier is the spline sweep. To use it, we're going to need to add in a spline actor. So I'm going to just double click on that. And we have this line here. It has two points on it right now. And I'm going to select this end here and stretch that out just a little bit. And then grab this end and stretch it out a little bit more. Then I'm going to go near the middle here and right click on the line and add a spline point. I just want to be able to shape this line just a little bit so it gives us a little bit of depth. After I've created the spline or the shape that I want this to follow, I need one of our 2D shapes that I might want to use. For this one, I'm just going to use the ellipse because basically we're going to create a pipe. So I'm going to double click on the ellipse, add that ellipse in, and I'm going to bring the size of this down a good bit. Bring it down to 25. And this is what we're going to add the modifier to. So now I'll go into the modifiers and I'll go to spline sweep. And I'm going to need to add this spline to the spline sweep so that it will follow the path. To do that over here, and let me make a little more space so we can see this. The spline actor week right there, I'm going to open that up and I'm going to look for that spline actor. It is spline actor right there. And so I'll select it. And now you'll see that it has taken the shape of the ellipse and wrapped it along that spline. Let me rotate that so that you can see it a little bit better. And now you see that the spline sweep modifier is using the shape of the ellipse to sweep along that spline. There's a few options over here we can take a look at. Let me bring this back around. You'll see that it's a little bit jagged in the curves. So I'm going to increase the steps there quite a bit. And the progress offset allows us to animate this on or off. We can also change the start and the end of the object. And then we can also scale the start and the end of the object. These are capped. So let me rotate back around. You'll see that it's capped. If we don't want them capped, we can deselect that. And if you want to loop this, you can by selecting the loop option. For the last modifier, I'm going to add in a 3D cube. And I'm going to go down to its size and adjust it a little bit. That modifier is taper. So when you add the taper modifier, you'll see that it also adds the subdivide modifier. I'm going to increase this up a little bit. And on the taper modifier, you can adjust the amount of taper. On the extent, you can choose whether it's the whole shape or a custom portion of the shape. You also have the ability to adjust the interpolation type. It's set to linear right now. We'll take a look at quadratic, cubic, quadratic inverse, and cubic inverse. You can adjust the resolution and also the reference frame. You can set it to custom and offset it.
I hope this quick look at modifiers has been helpful. For more on Unreal Engine's motion design tools, hit the like and subscribe button.